So uh, we're going to talk about Christianity contributing to rape culture. So when I grew up in Christianity, there was this closed-mindedness that this is what our family has done, and this is what we do, so we're just going to continue it. And if you try to look outside of Christianity for another faith, well, there's something wrong with you, okay? And I know for a long time, I was um, definitely attracted to Buddhism, and I would have a lot of people, you know, um, who were so traumatized from Christianity belief saying that if you are interested or curious about something outside of Christianity, you're going to go to hell or you're going to um, experience God's wrath. And in the book, it seemed like God's wrath was, ooh, pretty, you know. And then a lot of the families in the church that I went to were struggling. Yet the pastor seemed to be the one who had all the answers, you know, was able to have a nice car, was able to have a nice home and be able to make sure they had all their needs met. And I always, you know, would wonder, why is it that every time I get paid, I am being guilt-tripped into paying 10% of what I have taken the time to earn, yet my family doesn't even have the basic money skills to have peace in the house. There was so much financial issues going on. And people in my family were trying to make it look as if they had their finances together, especially in the church. But in reality, they were basically struggling. They were living above and beyond their means. And they knew that the church we went to, and I, I can't remember the name of it, but I remember his name was Pastor Parker. You were uh, really emotionally manipulated if you did not give to the church and there would be gossip surrounding you. I remember my grandmother, she was actively, um, you know, giving money to the church so the church couldn't steal new, uh, you know, uh, colored glass windows. And, you know, because it's a quote unquote God's temple, I was just thinking, oh, okay, I get it. But she seemed very bitter and resentful because it sounded like she really put a lot of money into that. And she didn't see it happen. And then when, you know, a brand new church, you know, the church moved to another place because they didn't like that the church was located in the ghetto because it lowered their value. They moved somewhere out somewhere near the country and they didn't have the... Uh, a, a, a decent parking lot, but a lot of people were able to, you know, they saw the big church, you know, and they're like, well, we got to make sure we find a good parking spot. So when the church ends, we can get out and leave in a decent time. But yet no one was aware that the church was like, how the hell are we going to fix this parking lot? All the while funneling money. So, and there was a lot of emphasis on Ruth. I remember my mother resentfully looked at me and said, you remind me of Ruth. And I asked her, what you mean? Because there had been, she went above and beyond to have me feel defenseless and doubt myself so that I would be tethered to her. And um, when she said that I had the characteristics of Ruth, I blushed because this was the kindest she had ever really been to me. You know, in between the snarky comments and trying to make me feel as if I was doing something wrong, it was either her, you know, being snarky and beating me down or it was her, you know, um, 
feeding off my energy. And for her to describe me as Ruth, I was like, okay. So when I started doing research on Ruth, Ruth gave up her freedom to go make sure she was able to uh, take care of someone who was able to take care of themselves. And you can connect this, you know, to empaths being conditioned to not know what they're capable of doing. And when us empaths really go above and beyond to find out who we are, we get a whole lot of hell, man. So for a long time, I grew up wanting to be like Ruth, wanting to attract um, a partner that Ruth attracted. But if you actually take time to read the Bible, these people don't actually, this, this is like um, arranged marriages. No one's really getting to know each other. You know, the men have multiple wives. The women can't have certain such and such. And all these, like, different unrealistic standards, the Bible is fully patriarchy. And I remember I had a dream. I had, and this dream is very specific. There was a Bible verse, and I don't actually remember it. But in my dream, I was reading it. And it was basically condoning rape. Now, the average person would just be like, okay, you know, um, the woman must d do such and such to give to her husband. But it was basically condoning rape. So, and I really don't care if someone is like, oh my gosh, you just, you're, you're the Antichrist. No, I know God exists. I know Jesus exists. I know Jesus is an ascendant master. I know that the spiritual realm is har at harmony with each other. Buddha is good with Lord Ganesha. You know, um, Goddess Yamaya is cool with Goddess Kali. Jesus respects everybody. So to have a book that really is basically supporting rape so that a bunch of women's sexual energy can be given to them. It's like if you don't fall into the arranged marriage type thing, it's set up so it's like you're a Jezebel because you chose to, you know, express your creativity through dressing how you felt about yourself. At the end of the day, however you choose to dress, if your energy is like that, you're going to have people who want to be around you. And Christianity is set up so that people do not want to take accountability for their actions. I remember, you know, the pastors would, you know, say, come up here and if you have any, you know, any um, guilt and shame about your sexual history, come up. But the prayer he would pray would basically increase the sexual uh, guilt and shame. So people would continuously basically get into these things and go to the pastor, and the pastor would be like, I'm just like you. I just was anointed by God, you know, and I have, you know, and I'm, I'm willing to take up this uh, sense of responsibility to share my experience with you guys of what God has given me. But the people thought only, only the pastor can have this knowledge. No, anyone can have knowledge. All of us can be preachers. All of us can sit here in our own unique way and share about the messages that God has to give us. There goes this, you know, uh, authority and structure in the Christianity where the preacher is the only one that can connect to God. The priest is the only one that can connect to God. Then you have the Bible that is basically, you know, having women feel scared as hell. Like, you know, if you do not please a man sexually or you choose to go somewhere else, you're going to get punished for that. 
Like literally, you have ha you have men who have started wars due to the fact that they cannot get a woman's sexual energy. So they won't get their hands caught throwing stones. They'll target whatever the feminine energy they can't get access to is connected to. So I know personally for me, I have my children targeted. You know, think about the Bible. They talk so much ill shit about the Egyptians. But what they won't tell you is because due to extreme envy and jealousy, they were not able to have abundance. They did not know what self-love was. They knew what oppression was. And they knew that there was power struggles where if, you know, somebody was in charge of everybody and the only person who could get messages from God you could easily manipulate the hell out of people. <laughs> but then, the Egyptians were able to manifest because they were tapped and in tune to their chakras. So when the Egyptians were showing abundance and they were hiding their abundance and the so-called Christians were trying to raid the tombs, There was some evil genius who said, we're going to basically make Christianity become worldwide to the point where we have people, you know, turn against the Egyptians, but we're going to be using what the Egyptians did to manifest and make it look as if God did it because these people were cursed. These people were cursed to not have a soul because they basically <laughs> use Egyptian knowledge for their own personal gain. This is where you have manifestation come into play. Now, this is where we go to, you know, rape culture, tantric sex. If a woman is not willingly willing to submit to, you know, um, an arranged marriage so that someone can manifest off her sexual energy, then this is where you have laws set up that is supporting rape. And as a female and as masculines too, you have to be mindful of loopholes because the more you love yourself and the more attractive you become, the more smarter and faster and stronger you have to become. You know, if you stay hidden, you still could get targeted for rape. You know, if you are a healer and your energy's great and you're hidden, you're going to be well targeted for rape. You know, not like trying to scare anybody or shit like that, but your energy will speak. And because you'll be playing, you know, hidden in the shadows and shit, they'll target you more. Now, if you are in the spotlight, and you exposing shit, it's more so, you know, people are willing to pay you for your energy. You know, sex trafficking, um, treating you like a prostitute. And if you are willing to, you know, accept breadcrumbs This rape culture that is supported by Christianity will definitely go above and beyond to exploit you. So in this moment, I want you guys to really connect to how you feel when you think about Christianity. If you feel fearful and you feel like God is going to basically strike you down, for being curious about this, this is a fear tactic. And there's people who will gladly exploit you sexually doing this. Without further ado, leave your uh, comments. Let's have a discussion.